how to find the line, how to compute the line. That's the next topic. And the name is the title of the topic. The name is called the least squares method. And the question we should ask ourselves when we have some data in a scatter plot like that, two columns in our Excel sheet, how should we, if we got the challenge, how would you actually compute the line? That is, which intercept, which slope would you compute to make the line such that it is the right line in relative to the points I'm having? How about I claim using this good idea? Now we don't have to push you to find the idea again. This was found quite some years ago that this could be a good idea. It's not the only possible idea, but it's a pretty good one in many contexts. How about minimizing this variance, making sure that the points are close to the line, or maybe I should say more relevantly so, making sure that the line is as close to the points than possible, right? We need to measure how to measure this closeness, right? Or define it, and here's the definition. And that's why we call it least squares. Check. We could also put it like this, that it's the sum of slowly, the observations minus the line. Still to be seen. That's the same thing. Because the residuals was the difference between the, ex the, the line and the observations, right? So, we are searching for an intercept and a slope that makes the difference between the line value and the actual values as small as possible, measured in this quadratic or squared way. So we make this these sum of squared deviances. So we take all the deviances and minimize them. In a way, it's a bit like uh, minimizing all these squares, sometimes people visualize a nice square there. Um, all these squares, the sum of all those are minimized. So it's also vertical distances to the line that is minimized. So we sum all the vertical differences to the line and then we find the estimates that make that small as, as small as possible. That's a minimization challenge from a mathematical point of view, right? So this, these are just numbers. X and Y are given data. So here's a minimization problem in two dimensions, beta zero and beta one. It's a two dimensional function. We can minimize by taking the derivatives, solve, setting equal to zero and solving, uh, and we would find the solution to this minimization problem. It's not rocket science, but maybe not all of us are well trained in two-dimensional optimizations. That's fair enough, but I hope we can follow the concept of it, right? Um, this is used to, I think I will actually, yeah, let's leave it there, to visualize different things. The idea here is to visualize that there is a um, true model here. That's the assumption. We don't know this model. This is why we collect the data. That's because we want to know about beta zero and beta, actually there's no reason why this should have a two actually. It's a beta one of course here. Um, there is a true model. We collect data to know about the true model. The data points are the points here. Then we match some line to the points, and this is our estimate of the truth, right? This is our best guess. So the red is the data, the red <laughs> formula is the data, the black points are the points, of course, 
and the black line is the true model. The true model we don't see in real life, but we'll, that's why we do everything that's to get as close to the truth as possible, to find an estimate of the truth. And here's the result. I'm not gonna go through the proof. Um, it's, as I said, you can have a look. It's not rocket science. Uh, but the result is given here, and you will see it. I'll just warn you, I'll give it to you in two almost identical versions. Uh, the first one you get is exactly how it is stated in the book, where it is stated as a theorem that partly, uh, oh sorry, uh, that gives you exactly the formulas for the intercept and for the slope. Vice versa, the opposite of what I said. Slope and intercept, right? Beta one is the slope, beta zero is the intercept. Basically the slope is, well, maybe I should say, here it is given by using capital Ys. And this is what, if we want to be formal, this is what we call the estimators. That's where, that's when we consider what we do as a random computation, as a random variable. To actually apply this in practice, this is how it looks. It's the same formula. It's just the y that has now become small y. And we have the challenge, which we share with everyone else writing statistics books, and we do exactly like everyone else, that even though we have a capital Y and a capital small uh, letter, uh, what's it called, lowercase y, um, we don't distinguish in our notation for the betas. It's not good notation, but it's the same notation as the rest of the world. So that's just to not make you more confused when you meet the rest of the world, that they don't distinguish either. Um, and in practice, I'm just, it's not gonna be an issue, right? It's so maybe it's just more confusing than, than uh, is needed. What you need to think about is, here is my formula for how to compute the intercept and the slope, the slope and the intercept. And that's in the way the, the order we do it. We compute the interest, God damn it. We compute the slope first, beta one. This is the covariability uh, between y and x divided by the x variability. So it's covariability relative to x variability. It makes some kind of sense, right? That gives the slope. Um, and then having computed the slope, we use the means of x and y to compute the intercept. So a line will always pass through, maybe I should put somewhere here, somewhere here is x bar comma y bar. The line always passes through x bar comma y bar. It's a consequence of these formulas. And it also shows that if we, for some reason, had an x column in our data set with a zero mean, and we could maybe sometimes have that if we just subtracted the mean from the data ourselves for one reason or the other. If we had a zero mean column of x's that we use in our model, the intercept simply equals the mean of y. So, so it's like moving, uh, centering the axis is like moving the line, the point cloud into the center of everything. Okay. It's time to try. Let's just uh, look at this for a second. It's a bit small, I know, but a bit of color instead of in, in R. Basically, here's where I construct my own toy data, not the height weight example, this, uh, the data point with, in this case, how many observations? Well, 20 observations here. Um, then I plot them. Then I, just to show you, I compute my slope and intercept manually. It's just to show you that these formulas are pretty easy to use. It's just using means and sums. Here is the co-variability and here is the x variability. And by using these means and sums, I can easily implement these uh, formulas in a one line R statement like this. So it's straightforward to do the hand calculation like, like this. And then secondly, I show you the very few characters needed to have R do everything for us like that, right? 
LMY tilde X and you have it. Um, then you can add the line. There are many ways to add lines and to do visualizations in R. Here's one way. You can use this function called AB line and then use the LM fit in there and you would get the line added to the plot. That's one way. Let's just leave it there actually because we already saw everything in plots and examples. That's the least squares method actually. Minimizing the squared residuals, the sum of squared residuals, making the variability from the line as small as possible. Here you go. This this was a this was a tricky one due to the detailness. The point was below, right? When a point is below, it has a negative residual because you take the observation minus the line. The observation minus the line that creates a negative residual, a negative deviation, and the right number. Well, that's the only negative actually. So you would have made the choice there. By the way, please appreciate my thick lines. I got up at uh, 4 a.m. this morning to produce thick lines for you. So there you are. Cash me outside, whatever that means. But uh, good. Oh, God. I'm, well, good job anyway. 